let me walk you through the process of installing and then starting up your your bama so first thing we need to do is we already have ours mounted on the wall so there are mounting holes on both ends that allow you to mount it onto a wall the next thing is we need to bring water into the actual bama so my unit has three h inch tubing connectors to it yours may come with tubing uh connectors that gets you half inch by three eighths or three eighths by quarter or there's also a fitting that will get you to a quarter inch male national pipe thread so on the incoming water the first thing we need to do is we're looking to get a bypass of our process water. That bypass of the process water should provide me constant flow and pressure. Especially if I have amperometric sensors with membranes on them, these sensors really want to see a constant flow and pressure coming into them. Uh, next thing on the inlet we may want to consider is installing a filter. So my Bama that's installed in front of us has a filter already installed in it. Depending on the conditioning of the water coming in, you may want to also have one on your water. Things to consider with the filter. That filter does need to be maintained. Anything that is being captured in this filter could potentially be uh, consuming whatever my sensors are trying to read. For instance, I have a chlorine sensor here. Anything that is gathering in this filter may start consuming that chlorine. So now the water that's actually going by the sensor is not the same water that my process has because the chlorine was consumed in this filter. So just be aware of that if you do have a filter installed in your, your Bama sensor housing. On the outlet of the water, we are typically taking this water to drain. Uh, if we're taking it to drain, we want to make sure that that discharge line isn't really long going down very far because we could create a siphon in this unit. If we decide to try to take it back to our process, we want to make sure we're not creating a negative pressure in this housing. Uh, if we create a negative pressure in the housing, that would uh, start to consume the electrolyte out of my sensors and that would... Uh, decrease the performance of the actual readings of the sensors. So now I have my water coming in, my water coming out. Those are both plumbed in. What I want to do now is focus on setting the water in here. In this installation, I'm not sure exactly how much pressure I have coming into the unit. So to be safe, what I'm going to do is install plugs in place of the sensors. That way I don't overpressurize my sensors especially my amperometric membrane sensors. So real simple. This unit has two chlorine sensors, free in total, pH, ORP, and temperatures. These are not installed. Uh, the pH, ORP, and temperature are not going to be installed because those sensors need to be stored in a solution. They need to be kept wetted. Uh, the amperometric sensors will be installed like you see here. The membrane caps will be on them, but there will no, not be any electrolyte inside of those caps. So I'm gonna simply loosen this fitting with the bayonet, put in a plug. And then I'm just gonna keep my sensors because they're hardwired here. I'm just gonna safely store them on top of the housing for right now. And the last one, my free chlorine sensor. Again, I'm going to make sure I protect the membrane and store it right on top. Last plug. I have the top sealed. I'm going to make sure all my thumb screws are tightened because I'm about ready to bring water in. Bottoms are all sealed up so I don't have water going all over the place. On the outlet, I'm going to open up my needle valve. So I'm going to turn it counterclockwise. My outlet valve's open, open. I'm going to come to my inlet now. This is open. Pressure relator, regulator is here. I'm going to open this slowly and introduce water into my flow cell. 
I'm going to be patient and let water kind of flow through all the cells. You can see it filling up each individual one. As it's doing that, it's forcing out all the air. So I'm going to watch for it to, to move all the air out of there. Once all the air is out of there, I'm going to glance over at my pressure gauge. So in this installation, we only have uh, about one and a half PSI. So I would urge you to look at your manuals for all your sensors and determine what the, the least uh, pressure the sensor can see. So in our case, the amperometric sensors are the ones that can have the least amount of pressure on them. So I want to limit the pressure on this sensor to below 14 PSI. So in this case, we're well below that, we're good. So if I was not, I would come here and just simply adjust my regulator to get it below the 14 PSI. The least amount of pressure for these sensors is best, but I still need to have flow running through the cell. Next thing I'm gonna do is come to my flow switch and I'm going to loosen this. A Little bit of water may come out of it. Pull up the shaft of the switch, hand tighten it. And if you noticed, as I did that, the float followed that. So right now there's, there's a significant amount of water flowing through this cell. In the case of the amperometric sensors, I usually want to keep that floater around 10 to 11 gallons per hour. That's a good starting point. Uh, we have well more than that going through this housing. So to restrict that, I'm going to come to my needle valve and start tightening this clockwise. And that will start to restrict the flow, bringing down my float. I'm going to read the top of the float. I'm going to put it right there where right at about 11. Now I need to loosen this nut again and I want to bring my switch down. It has to come down and be in contact with that float to register flow in my controller. So I loosen that nut and bring this down to where it starts to touch it and put a little bit more on it. Hand tighten this a little bit and that should stop the leaking. So at this point, I'm gonna look back over at my pressure. Pressure still looks good. Flow is set where it needs to be. You can also turn the water off, make sure my float drops out. Reintroduce the water. Float goes back up, comes in contact with my switch. Now we're ready to install our sensors. So what I need to do is I wanna isolate my water so I'm going to turn the water off and now I'm good to come and start installing the sensors. So the first thing we're going to do is grab our free chlorine sensor, loosen by bayonet fitting. Come in here. I would now at this point electrolyte my sensor, put it in here with the bayonet fitting, clamp it in. Next sensor is the total chlorine sensor. Again, electrolyte my sensor. And then tighten the bayonet fitting. Next one in the line is my pH sensor. This will ship loose. I'll remove it from its storage. Going to take the, the plug out. Grab my mounting set. So in this mounting set, you need to make sure you grab this O-ring. The O-ring is going to slide onto the bottom of the sensor underneath this clip. And then this part of the mounting set will set, slides on there. Other part of the mounting hardware on the top. I'm just going to kind of loosely tighten that. Install it. Bayonet fitting. Come here and I should be able to just hand tighten this. Grab my cable. Ours are labeled. This one says pH. Put my SN6 connector on my pH one. Next is your ORP. Same mounting as the pH. So I'm going to loosen. Grab my O-ring. Again, install the O-ring on the bottom. 
mounting hardware. This part on the bottom, this one over the top of the sensor. Lightly tighten these. Remove my plug. Take my sensor again. I can usually snug this up by hand. Grab my ORP cable. Put the SN6 connector on. Last one is my temperature sensor. Take the plug out. This one has a little bit of a, a smaller mounting assembly. So on there, there is also this O-ring. I'm going to put it on here. Hand tighten it. Put my bayonet clip in there. Tighten it a little bit more. This one gets a BN6 connector. Tighten that on. And at this point, I'm ready to introduce the water again. I'm going to slowly open this up. Let the water run through the cell. I want to make sure there's not any air coming in there anywhere. Make sure, verify my pressure again. My flow looks good coming through it. And then the last thing I can do is just to verify my flow through this sample port. I want to make sure that when I open it, there's not a pressure washer of water coming out of it. I also don't want a negative pressure where I hear it start gurgling water. You should just see a steady stream. So if I open this, you can see a nice steady stream going through there. So now you're all set up. I would let the sensors be conditioned by that water and whatever they're trying to read going through it. And the next step would be to walk through the calibration process.